Does the soil actually breathe? Yes, no. yeah. How often does it breathe? Okay, now, one of the disruptive parts, <clears throat> the agronomist will say the soil does not breathe. It's the microbes within the soil, and it's the roots within the soil that breathe, but the soil actually doesn't breathe. Okay. There is respiration. Do we have any airline pilots? Anybody that's gone through pilot training understands a high pressure front is heavier and they have to compensate to bring more lift because that's heavy sinking air. That's designed to push air into the soil to give you free nitrogen, to give you free carbon, to give you free oxygen. As that passes through, you have a low pressure front that brings air up. And that's normally after a rain. And you walk outside, and, oh, you smell that nice, good, earthy smell. Mother Nature just exhaled. If you're at 150 PSI ballpark, you're going to get that. The minerals that used to be unavailable or tied up will become available and will become untied as long as you get air to them. The goal for your aerobic zone, how deep your roots want to go in the crop that you're growing. The deeper you get your aerobic zone, the further the high pressure front gets pushed in, the more microbial activity you have, the healthier your soil is, healthy being without disease or impairment. If you do this penetrometer in the spring, that is going to be the softest, most mellow, relaxed soil of the season. As you get into May, June, and July, and that sun starts beating down and cooking that soil, it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. Soil has personality, and anybody that farms understands that. Some of it's good, some of it's bad. Livestock has personalities too. Soil should not be overly soft, gooey, and sticky when it's wet and turn to a dirty, rotten rock when it's dry. Nothing should change its personality that much. What one thing could possibly keep the soil more mellow? Calcium. Calcium. 